The old man shuffles up the narrow cobblestone streets of Jerusalem, his long white hair flowing in the breeze. Friends stop and wave, but he hardly notices. His eyes flash and his face burns, for his heart is fixed on getting to the temple. Today I will see the consolation of Israel, the Messiah. I know I will see him today, he thinks, as he hurries toward the temple mount. He has waited his whole life for the promise of the Messiah to be fulfilled. Now, at last, the highlight of his life, the moment for which he has prayed and longed and ached, has arrived. As he nears the temple, the white marble columns and gold engravings shine brightly in the morning sunlight. He hobbles up the massive stone steps, feeling an unusual spring in his normally aching limbs. His heart hammers in his chest with heavy strokes as he enters the court of the Gentiles. Here, the loud clamor of money changers, the bleating of lambs, the sounds of other animals and birds can be heard, but all he can hear is the thundering of his own heart pounding in his ears. He hastens through the court of the women, his cheeks flushing hot with the spirit of revelation. He elbows his way through the crowd, looking, searching, longing, then suddenly he halts, arrested by the Holy Spirit. He feels the trembling rising from deep within. His hands shake, his eyes burn like torches. That's him, he thinks, spying a young Jewish girl holding a baby on the inner steps. Mary has been waiting on these steps in the inner court, holding the baby Jesus in her arms for what seems like hours. She watches as the priest lifts up the slivers of lamb's meat for the morning burnt offering. At last, the priest turns to her. Joseph takes the baby while she hands the priest two pigeons, which is the offering of the poor. By the way, the wealthy gave lambs, the poor gave doves or pigeons. The priest cuts the bird's throat and sprinkles their blood upon her, declaring her clean from the contamination of childbirth. Then Mary hands him five silver shekels to redeem the firstborn. The priest pronounces the benediction and she descends the steps, smiling and looking up. She whispers under her breath, Oh, Father, if only this priest could see what a paradox this is. Here I am paying the redemption price for the Redeemer of Israel himself. Simeon, the old prophet stands back reverently, watching and waiting until the purification is completed. He too knows the irony of this situation, as the Redeemer himself is being redeemed. Then, with his heart still pounding wildly in his chest, he approaches Mary and reaches out his arms for the child. His abruptness startles her. She flinches back shielding her baby, but when she sees his sparkling eyes and the glory blushing on his face, she knows the Spirit of God is upon him. Darting a glance at Joseph, she cautiously hands the child to Simeon. Lifting him up, the prophet shouts with a voice as strong as any young man's, He is a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. Mary's heart lurches. What could this mean, she wonders. But then the old man turns and looks deep into Mary's eyes. Solemnly, he says, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. Strangely, Mary can feel these words driving sharp and deep like the quick thrust of the blade of a sword into her sensitive being.